All right, this is AP, A, B, and B, C calculus. We're doing unit seven, section four, which is reasoning with slope fields. All right, let me get us a pen tool and then we'll get started. All right, so in example one, we're gonna consider the given differential equation, which is dy dx equals x squared plus one over y cubed. Uh, so let f of x be the solution to that differential equation. Describe all points in the xy plane such that the slope of f of x is positive, right? So what we're asking here, right, so, so what we're being asked here, the slope of f of x is positive, is we're being asked to describe uh, the points, so all points, and I'm going to explain what I mean by that in a sec, uh, where the slope of f of x, meaning where f of x is the sol solution to this, so where dy dx is greater than zero. So Whenever you're asked this, when you're asked this particular question to describe all points in the xy plane, it means that there's some sort of a pattern. You're not being asked to describe like three points. It's not 1 comma 7 and 8 comma 2 and 53 comma 708.8. It's not describing specific points. It's saying you're looking for a pattern such that this derivative is greater than zero. So let's think about what this means. So let's look at the numerator first x squared plus 1 is always positive, right? This is, this is a positive expression, right? x squared plus 1, uh, essentially, if you were picturing this graphically, it looks like a parabola that bottoms out at 1. This thing is positive. So I know that x squared plus 1 is always greater than 0. So if I want the entire fraction to be greater than 0, it's going to hinge on when this value is, is positive, right? So if y cubed is greater than 0, then the entire expression dy dx is going to be greater than zero. Now y cubed has to be strictly greater than zero because y is in the denominator, you can't divide by zero. So if I solve this, I'm gonna get that any point where y is greater than zero, so, so if y is greater than zero, then dy dx is greater than zero, and that's the answer we want. So when you're asked this question, which is gonna come up sometimes on an AP free response, it's, it's not so much to say that it's a trick, but some people will try to find specific points and that's not what you wanna do, right? So um, another way that you could say this, right, you could say something uh, like uh, all points in quadrant one, so, so this is points in quadrant one and quadrant two, right? Now I wouldn't go there, right? So you could say that as well. I would definitely include this information. Uh, I would make sure I communicate that I understand the numerator is positive, right? You wanna make sure it's clear that there's a reason you're not paying attention to that numerator, okay? All right, go ahead and try P1. It's the same concept. Uh, you can certainly pause me if you wanna try it by yourself. So we're gonna describe all points such that the slope of F of X is positive. So remember, uh, this is not so much a trick question as it is asking you to look for a pattern, not a specific number of points. You're not looking for five specific points, right? So if we look at this, I'm in the same situation where y squared, right? So y squared is greater than or equal to zero, right? It can be zero, but it's greater than or equal to zero, right? It can't be negative. So, uh, so basically, I need to point out that y can't be zero, Right? Because if y is zero, then this whole expression is zero, and, and they said positive, right? They didn't say non-negative, which would include zero, so, so positive. And then I also need this thing to be positive, right? It has to strictly be positive because uh, I can't make y squared negative. So in order to get a positive output, I need this to be positive, which would mean x plus 5 is greater than zero, so x is greater than negative 5. So my answer is all points such that x is greater than negative 5 and y can't be 0. So y can be any other number, you just can't have y equal to 0. So that's what we want. Those are the points that we want. All right. Consider the differential equation given here f of x is the solution to that differential equation, or one of the solutions. Um, we're given that f of 2 is 3. We're asked to write the equation of a tangent line to the curve, uh, specifically at x equals 2. So whenever you hear this, I don't care how high up in math you get, I don't care how complicated it gets, I want your brain to think two things. I need a point, and I need a slope. So in this particular instance, you are handed the point. You are given that f of 2 is 3, meaning when you input 2, you get a 3 out. There's your point x, comma y, 2, comma 3, right? And I need a slope. But remember, in calculus, slope is dy dx. 
right? Slope is derivative. So I'm evaluating dy dx at that point I'm given 2 comma 3. So I'm going to get that that's 2 times 3 over 2 plus a 4, which I'm pretty sure is 3 plus 4 or 7. So now I have a point and I have a slope. So my tangent line is going to be y minus the y value equals my m x minus the x value. If you want to solve for y, you can do so by just adding the 3 to the other side. You shouldn't simplify more than that, okay? And that's it. All right, go ahead and give P2 a try. Again, feel free to pause me if you want. Uh, yet again, we are asked for the equation of a tangent line, right? And as soon as we hear that, my first two thoughts about an equation of a line should be I need a point and I need a slope. Right? You can have all the resources in the world, but you have to do the, the thinking behind the problem yourself. It doesn't matter if you have a graphing calculator, it doesn't matter if you have a computer, it doesn't matter if you have all this other stuff. If you can't look at a problem and realize what's being asked, you're going to have a problem. So that's what I need you to do. I need you to look at a problem and be discerning about what you need to solve it. So my point is negative 1 comma 4, right? It was given to me right here. And my slope is going to be my dy dx evaluated at that negative 1 comma 4. So uh, negative 6 times 4 over a positive 1, right, because negative 1 squared, plus 2. I think I get a negative 24 over 3, which is a negative 8. So my answer should be y minus the y value equals my m, which is negative 8, x minus the x value. If you want to solve for y, you can add the 4 over, but again, I wouldn't suggest that you simplify more than that. The most simple version of this should just be adding the 4 to the outside. All right, let's keep moving. So the slope field for the differential equation that we have here is provided. So they already gave you a slope field. Uh, let f of x be a solution to the differential equation. Given that f of 0 is 1, what is the range of f of x? Okay, so let's go ahead and, and draw this, right? So here's uh, f of 0 is apparently a 1. And, and it's a little bit hard to see here, uh, but, but this is a 4, that's a 2. So, so here's f of 0 is 1, and I apologize that the graph's a little small. So let's draw this solution, right? I follow the orange line to the next snippet, levels out a little bit. I follow it to the next snippet, it's getting a little more level. And then I get to this like horizontal line that is totally a horizontal asymptote, right? It's going to go like that. And if I follow this guy down this way uh, to the next line, it gets a little steeper and then a little steeper and a little steeper. So there's my graph for A, right? So there's, there's A, right? This is Y equals F of X. I'm asked what the range is. Well, there's a horizontal asymptote at 4, and this graph seems to cap out at 4. So the range of this function seems to be uh, from negative infinity, that's how low it goes, up until 4. And it seems to be approaching but not reaching 4, right? There's a horizontal asymptote at 4. Uh, now, whether it actually reaches 4 or not is, is not necessarily something we know. And they might word it better for you on an AP. Uh, I can't entirely tell if it actually reaches the horizontal asymptote, but it seems unlikely that it does. Most of the time, we don't cross horizontal asymptotes. So uh, let's do the other one in G. So let G of X be a different solution. Given that G of 0 is 8, so here's 0, uh, that's 4, 6, and 8. Sorry, it's so tiny. What's the range of G of X? Well, if we follow this current down to the, the pink lines, they get a little flatter and a little flatter and a little flatter. And then, oh, look, hey, there's that horizontal asymptote. Right, and this seems to go up. So this is my this is my g of x. Right? Well, g of x seems to be the opposite situation. It seems to have a horizontal asymptote at four and then go up forever. Right, so that's my range for g of x. Right, so the idea here is that in order you didn't need the differential equation at all. I gave you the differential equation, but you certainly don't need it. All you needed here uh, was to plot the two solutions and see what they look like. All right, so you go ahead and give this a try for p three. Same idea. Uh, you're going to go ahead and put that leaf in the river and then follow it to sketch what the curve's going to look like, right? So pause me if you want to do it by yourself. So f of x is a solution to this diff eq such that f of 2 is equal to 0. So uh, again, I'm sorry for the super duper small numbers, but it, it is what it is. So here's uh, f of 2 is 0. So we'll do uh, a in red this time. So again, I'm going to follow, uh, I'm going to follow these lines up and I see that they're leveling out and oh, hey, it looks like that, right? And then it gets steeper this way, and I'm asked, what's the range? Well, this seems to be 3, right? Because this is 0, 2, 4, so that's 3. So it seems that my range is from negative infinity to 3, right? If I do the same thing for g, so that's for f of x, right? The red one was f of x. g of x is a different solution, because remember, I could have a different solution for every single leaf I could drop into this current, right? So g of 2 
is 6. So there's 2, 4, 6. So g of 2 is 6, right? When I drop the leaf in the current, right, if I follow these down, it gets slightly more level, right? See how those slopes are leveling out? And then, oh, hey, look, horizontal asymptote, right? So there's my g of x. And up here, the slopes get steeper and steeper. Okay, that goes up forever. So it seems like the range is 3 to infinity. All right. Oh, the other way you could write this, and I didn't do it on the other one, you could have written y is greater than 3, right? And, and, and here you could have written y is less than 3. And if we went back to the other one, here you could have written, written y is greater than 4. And in green, you could have written y is less than 4. I prefer parenthetical notation, but it's up to you. Okay. Example 4. Explain why the slope field given cannot possibly match the graph. So this time, you need to give a justification for why they can't match. So if I look at this, the first thought I have is, hey, this only depends on y, right? So let's see if that's the reason. Well, when I look across, all the horizontal things line up. So nope, that's not enough of a reason. Next thing I notice is that I'm in quadrant 1, where both the x's and the y's are positive. Well, in quadrant 1, y is greater than 0. So dy dx would be greater than 0, right? One half of something greater than 0 being greater than 0. But in the given graph, right, in the given slope field, uh, all of the slopes are negative, right? And they should be positive based on the equation I was given, right? Anywhere that y is positive, right? If y is positive, these should be positive slopes. And in this particular uh, picture, all of the slopes are negative. There's my justification for why that can't possibly match up, right? Let's go to one for you to try. So try P4. Same thing. Explain why this slope field can't possibly match what we're given. All right. So um, I notice uh, a couple things, right? So there's one logical justification here that I actually didn't include, which is, uh, so you could look and say, wait a second, logically going across, these are all the same. So dy dx only depends on y, not x, which is definitely not correct for this answer. Now, that's one way. The specific argument I was actually going for, though, is that this is quadrant 4. And in quadrant 4, the x's are positives and the y's are negatives. So uh, in quadrant 4, right, uh, y over x should be less than 0, right? which would mean that dy dx should be less than 0, right? These slopes should be negative. But on the picture, the slopes are all greater than 0 in quadrant 4, so it can't possibly be the right picture, right? So it can't possibly be the right picture. I would argue you could probably use either of these justifications, but this is probably what the AP would be looking for. Uh, I think I gave you a slightly easier question here than I intended to by giving you something that only depended on y. All right. Let f of x be the solution to the differential equation represented in this huge monster slope field. Given that f of 5 is negative 1, we're going to find the given limit. So f of 5, here's 5, is a negative 1, which would be right here, right? And we're going to go ahead and find the given, uh, the given values, right? So if we follow this up, we'll see that on, on the axis here, right? On the axis right here, we seem to have horizontal lines, right? So, so this is a horizontal asymptote, right? Because there's horizontal lines on the axis, right? And then if we follow this down, they get steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper, so it goes down forever. So the limit, so this is, this is my graph of y equals f of x, right? The slope field is all the possible solutions, right? But this is one particular solution to this differential equation. Uh, and again, because there's horizontal lines right here, and it's kind of hard to see on the axis, but there are little horizontal lines, uh, that's how I know that there's this horizontal asymptote. So as x approaches negative infinity, my output is approaching 0. And as x approaches positive infinity, the y value is approaching negative infinity. It's going down forever. All right. So let's go ahead and do another one. Same idea. f of x is a solution to this uh, crazy monstrous differential equation. right? Uh, so we are to this slope field, rather. So f of 5 is 10. So here's 5 comma 10, right? So if we were going to sketch this graph, right, we follow these slopes down, they're getting, there's negative slopes, but they're getting less and less steep until we get to this horizontal slope this way, right? And this is going up steeper and steeper and steeper as we go. We're asked to evaluate the given limit. So this is my y equals f of x. Well, uh, as x goes 
to the left forever, my y goes up forever, so that's infinity. And as x goes to the right forever, this seems to be a 4, right? So my y is approaching 4. All right. Let y equals f of x be a solution to this differential equation. Uh, given that f of 0 is 5, sketch the, uh, the curve f of x on this slope field. So again, sorry that these numbers are a little bit small. Uh, so f of 0 is 5 would be right here, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to try and follow uh, the curve, right? So, so it's going to go down a little. See how that's a negative slope, down a little. And then this slope starts to peak up, right? You can see how those are bending up and then up more and up more and up more and up more and it gets steeper and it goes like that. If we go back this way, you can see how these slopes are going downward and then down and down and down and they get steeper. So there seems to be my y equals f of x, right? And again, it's not perfect, but it seems to look like it's a cubic of some kind, right? That's some kind of a cubic. Um, now, g of x is a different solution on the, same, on the same slope field, right? g of 5 is negative 5, right? So, so g of 5, here's 5, is negative 5. That's right here, right? We're going to go ahead and sketch that curve. So you can see how these are really steep lines this way. So this is steep, and it's going to get steeper and steeper and steeper, right? Uh, this is steep going down, but then starts to level out, and then, oh wait, those slopes are going up, and then they level out again, and oh wait, then they go down, right? So that's my, my y equals g of x. So this is sort of what I'm talking about when I talk about slope fields being used for weather, right? Um, if your data point says that this is the value you're looking at, then you end up with the red curve, but if the pressure shifts or the temperature shifts or something else changes, and suddenly you get this green data point, well, now you have a very different weather pattern, right? And that's sort of the way... Uh, weather is predicted is using a lot of variables and really complicated uh, algorithms. All right, so let's do one last problem. Same idea. Uh, so we have this crazy complicated looking slope field, right? Given that f of 0 is 5, sketch the slope field. So f of 0 is 5. Cool, right? Uh, so I see that this seems to be a horizontal line, but when I get over here, I have positive lines and they get more and more and more positive, right? Over here, this seems to be a negative slope and it's getting more and more and more negative, but not as steeply negative as it did on the other side, right? It looks something like this. So that's my y equals f of x. It doesn't have to be perfect, it's just a rough idea. If we do uh, the other one, right? So given that y equals g of x is a different solution, right? And g of zero is zero, which is right here. Let's sketch that curve. Well, same thing, this seems to be level, right? I'm gonna go this way first. Those are negative slopes and they're getting steeper and steeper and steeper, but not super steep, right? And over here, they're getting steeper, but they get steep very quickly, right? So that's my y equals g of x, and there are my two solutions on the slope field, okay? So it is possible on an AP, sometimes they'll give you a fairly, fairly complicated uh, slope field and ask you to sketch some solution curves or answer some questions about them. And that is it for 7.4.